Right. So today is options expirations in the United States. It is the 17th of November. We are live on YouTube for our Friday investment talk. I'm Chris Davies and I'm here with Alan McGregor. As usual, we do this twice a month. I'm going to get this off. I'm going to let Alan run away with it with his own. Actually, well, I, actually I, I, this I is mean just... I mean, to be I quite honest, this bro, is the I, best intro we're going to ever have. <laughs> Go, Alan. <laughs> but but it's nothing unusual, Chris. We're extremely high bro on this uh, on this uh, YouTube video and the, the the Friday webinar, the fit that we do. We're always very high bro. We're always talking about opera exactly. and exactly. and high yeah. theater and high drama, <laughs> quoting quoting plays and Russian and I, and I know and I know you're a huge Tolstoy fan that likes to read Tolstoy in its native language. And I mean, it's, it's, it's not a secret. It's no secret. I and know, I thought, no secret. We're going to we start <laughs> off right. Come on, let's start off right. This is, well, this I is my birthday be... month, so this is perfect. <laughs> I just thought that this this summed up perfect. Actually, it's from Bank of America. It's from it's from one of their research uh, papers. You probably, you, you possibly saw it. I read, but, it. Yeah. Yeah, I read I mean, the headline. I didn't, I didn't realize it, it was. A, it was great. Uh, I mean, it's every, well, every country yeah. is unhappy in its own way. And and, and the theme that I, I thought about this, and it, and it does talk about the U.S. basically as being um, the only one that's happy. And that's that's really the theme. And I, because I thought if you go high, bro, you go Tolstoy. If you go low, bro, you go Tina. Because I, right. my, I, my struggle is there's no alternative. The U.S. has had a great, basically a great week. I mean, it's had three of the biggest up days. A great in the, decade. Some year. would say a great 15 years. You know, I that. just listened to JP Morgan Wealth this week and they were saying the same thing. It's like, unless you were in the US, you just were miserable. So, you know, I know. that's it. And US it, equities, it, so, yeah. Exactly. And, and and that's basically what I'm, that, that was my theme because I was struggling really for a theme this week and I thought, well, yeah. And then when the Tolstoy quote came up and uh, it's either that or Tina. So US is resurgent, right. but what about the rest of the world? Um, and and basically we've got you know the UK. This is the UK's uh, you know the the inflation figures were encouraging. Uh, it's come down quite sharply, but but it's just about holding on. There's no growth. Uh, you know the markets are are in a bit of a, a quandary. So it's, there's not really a lot to look at there. I mean, and, and frankly, if you're looking at the U the UK to save the world, <laughs> you're in a, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, Frank, but having said that, if you if you look at Europe, that's even worse. So actually, Euro stocks did have a decent week. I mean, that's for them, that's a really decent week. It's up five percent or something like that. But and the market performed well, but the actual economies are stagnating. I mean, if you look at this as uh, Euro area and focus on the GDP, you know, two thousand and twenty three. I mean, there's a couple of two percents there, but Portugal, Spain, and Greece. That ain't gonna save anybody. <laughs> they're just they're just gonna. And the large it. economy of Germany is the one really. Well, the Germany is the Germany is the one, and Germany's September exports is what I'm gonna come on to. Germany's September exports fell two point four month on month, ten point five percent year on year. Uh, the the exports, uh, imports fell one point seven percent month on month and fell eighteen point six percent year on year. So they're not, they're not exporting. They're exporting a lot less, but they're importing even even lesser. If if I can say that, which is and that's not a great year for Europe's engine. I mean, this is this is you know, you know this is the, the big economy mm -hmm. in here and, and and Italy. If you wanted to look at the, the next one in France, I mean, neither of them, you know, basically and and Germany is is by far the outlier because it's it's a negative figure there. Um, and, and unsurprisingly, we saw re Germany's retail sales volume falling zero point eight percent month on month. Uh, uh, and food sales are, are up two percent month on month, but non food sales down three point seven. Non non store sales are also down three point seven. So it's not great. I mean, Europe is 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 also you can argue it's stag stagnating because if you look at some of the uh, figures that are coming in, inflation in uh, twenty twenty three, these are all much much higher, noticeably higher than all of the uh, the growth yeah. figures. Um, so really, still pretty. I mean, not scary numbers, but for Europe, those are pretty high numbers. Uh, yeah, look at look history. at the 2024 forecast it doesn't get better out i mean that's the whole thing it's still of, uh, of, of, of inflation yeah it's still yeah. miserable right well gro growth is growth is the key i mean if you, if you start to get growth somewhere then then right. these inflation figures don't look that bad but these are stagflationary figures basically yeah absolutely. i mean really, really struggling um now the the, the next uh, place we'll look at and i'll try to be quite brief because I've talked a lot about it in the last few months is, is China. And I think the, the good old Prez is, is meeting your Prez this week. Um, and actually- I met him last week, I think. I met him, what, three days ago? And, three days and, ago, but and, I think I think Z is still there, is he not? Did, did he leave today? I don't know. I um, think they made 
you know, quick work of San Francisco cleaned it up and got him out of there. I mean, there was a great story, and I think it was the Financial Times today, that there was 100 U.S. businessmen invited to, to meet G. And uh, Elon Musk was there, Steve, Steve Cook was there, um, and others that basically said, please don't tell anyone that I'm here <laughs> because I'm not supposed to be here. Um, but he, they, got, they gave him a standing ovation. They, they gave Z a, a standing ovation because they'd realized that they need to A, sell their products in China. And a lot of them have obviously manufacturing facilities in China too. So they've got to be very delicate about these things. Um, but if you look at China, I mean, we had a great, you know, when the US went up, it went up pretty much this, this last week. And then uh, Thursday, it had a terrible day because, and, and we'll go on to it in a second, that basically bad figures coming out, but even worse, Alibaba, uh, was was pretty much the the the, the, the catalyst for China really um, retreating on on any of the good news that was there. So yeah, Z's trip might be a landmark in the fall political tensions with the US, but the Chinese economy is still not going to single handedly drive the global economy uh, that it has in the past decade. And and that's those days have gone. I think um, you know they're going to they're going to turn into and and quite rightly so they've they've they're moving they're transitioning their economy from a frontier market to to one of the big uh, global uh, economies and, and you can't expect eight percent nine percent growth that they've had in the past so if you can get three four five percent continually then then that's fine um the chinese market barely held on to positive territory as we can see it's 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 actually well this is alibaba but china itself finished slightly higher uh than it, than it did um and actually the, the figures were not good alibaba ditched uh, plans to spin off its cloud business and and list its supermarket as a, as a separate entity which i talked about earlier this year um that's and what uh, stock. that's what yeah it was yeah stock. it was like yeah. okay if you're not going to restructure they think there's political problems with that yeah they were, they were going to split up then to four or five different entities and basically yeah. you know shareholder value it went up 20 percent in april when they announced that and then it went back down 20 percent this month, this week, yeah. when they said, "No, we're not going to do that anymore," or probably not right now, anyway. Um, so yeah, shares fell ten percent after the um, after the the group said that U.S. export. Well, I said also U.S. export controls had had created uncertainties, and listing plans for its grocery chain Fresh Hippo, which I love, on is are on hold as it evaluates market conditions. Fresh Hippo, uh, it's the, <laughs> it's just like, wonderful. Like, I, you gotta love Chinese anglific anglification of names. Anyway, Chinese numbers. Uh, this is this is the big ones. Uh, you know, th it's actually deflationary. I, I mean, the pork in particular, which is which is big Chinese staple, and and food in general is in a deflationary uh, 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 area. There, um, manufacturing PMI fell fell zero point seven points. So it's not too bad, but not great either. Your order is down 1.49.5 and export order is down 1.46.8. I said I didn't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, and probably spent more than I, than I should have. Brazil. Mm -hmm. Brazil uh, had, had been doing pretty well. Um, and then uh, the Brazilian economy ended the third quarter in negative territory. So it's actually in recession territory uh, for the last quarter. Central bank data showed on Friday reversing a performance that had been surprisingly positive due to a booming farming sector. Uh, the index, the, key, the BR, IBC BR index, a key predictor of gross domestic product, posted a seasonally adjusted 0.6% decline in the third quarter. And the finance minister had already been drawing attention to a very poor third quarter, so it was not really a big surprise, which is why the markets didn't really go back uh, based on the news. Um, compared to uh, so the higher borrowing costs and declining commodity prices compared to the same period last year. Uh, factors impacting corporate performance and consequently tax revenue. So Brazil ain't doing really, really well. What I would say, uh, two things on Latin America, high high positions in cash. I don't know if you caught this one. This is this is a really interesting graph. The average cash position of Latin America fund managers is as an eight percent. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not about eight percent. It's just about that's the trend, and and you yeah. know compared to you know even two thousand eighteen. Uh, and, and even you know in the, the worst the worst time of, of COVID, it wasn't even eight percent. It was barely, barely seven. So we're you know we're they're just not seeing value. Having said that, Melly, one of your favorite stocks, I think it had a um, one year high uh, last week. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's doing pretty well. Great uh, earnings. Uh, yeah, yeah. Expanding margins and all this stuff. Yeah. No, uh, absolutely. Really uh, and I'm I'm not going to talk about SE Group, which is the other side of the coin because they got crushed uh, basically. Yeah. 
uh, down twenty five percent almost in one day, which was horrible. That if goes back to China, some stuff. other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. another mm-hmm. Southeast Asia. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Hence, hence my point. Mexico was good, uh, profiting mm-hmm. from a growth in nearshoring, uh, mm-hmm. I, I believe, um, which obviously is, is you know proximity to the US helps a lot with that. Um, if we look at other emerging markets, I don't have a specific one for India. I have the numbers, but I didn't come, didn't come up with the graph. India's October market PMI is disappointed. The manufacturing PMI is down two points. Non-manufacturing PMI down 2.6 to 58.4. Compare those numbers at way past 50, so they're still it's still pretty positive, but they're declining. And this, uh, I, I don't know if you can see that. This is a, this is developing versus emerging. And actually developing or developed is lower, but it's, it's stabilized at around 50. Mm-hmm. Whereas we're seeing emerging markets are basically coming back down into negative territory, which or below 50, which is contracting, basically. So those are not good figures. So really the question is, where's the money going? And this I found fascinating. This is the net percentage of, of global fund managers that say they're overweight global emerging market equities. And if you look going back way, way, way back, Okay, there's a small period here around COVID where it was negative, but here it's basically 100. So nobody is overweight global emerging markets. So, you know, and I, and I, I pulled out this graph. I hope I can bring it up, Chris, because I love this graph. We're going to, I'm going to bookmark this for future. Do you remember this one? Mm-hmm. I brought, yeah, this up yeah, in, of brought this up in July. What do you see? What do you see as the best opportunities for growth for the next seven years? Emerging markets and emerging market yeah. value. Well, mm-hmm. I don't think it is, Chris. <laughs> Where's the money going? It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, way, it's yet to sh- it's yet to show itself, right? I mean, it's this US. is a seven years. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah. but yet, yet, you know, if you go look at the left side of that graph, minus three percent large U.S. large cap. Ah, oh. uh, the seven-year asset class. Re- Real return forecast. Yeah, uh, that it, it, maybe that's because of inflation, but because that actually is you know you, you have to returns. actually have negative no, growth maybe. over ten years, or or actually, yeah. I mean, that's just a, the world tipped on its head. That's not what we've seen in the last fifteen years oh, at yeah. all, right? It's, right, and and, and we joked saying, about that. You know, this this if you look ten or twelve years back to twenty ten, you right. don't see this at all. I mean, you saw right. prediction then that this is what it would be. But, you, but the reality was different. And again, people yeah. are saying, oh, but the next 10 years are going to be different. The next 10 years are, are really where emerging markets are going to come out. I mean, they've got to be right one of these days, maybe, surely. Yeah, maybe. yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, everyone's not, right well, we've talked so, Yeah, we've talked so much about all the things that lead up to, uh, a, could lead up to a change in this, right? A change so that it, this reflects reality. But it's just going to take time to materialize. And, it, uh, you know, obviously no, it's governance. Like, I think it's a huge amount about governance. Governance. And you really have to see, you know, the things that make the U.S. economy weak really, uh, you know, appear like yeah. not just not just like hope and pray that, like, you know, things are going to get Straight bad because dollar. of politics yeah. or something. You know, it, it's got to actually change things. And, and 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 until I mean. I I I, I want to put. I'm going to put the link to the J.P. Morgan Wealth thing that I actually listened to this week. Their their chief economist, who's not on Twitter, who who I'd never heard of, it, just mm-hmm. really kind of laid it out and said, "Look, you know, the U.S. is facing some kind of you know existential kind of questions in the next ten years uh, uh, regarding how to cover the thirty trillion dollars in debt." Mm-hmm. But and it, and it's not like the U.S. is going to grow itself out of it. That, I mean, that's his whole point. It just yeah. it's not like post-war, you know, 1950s. It's it's actually, you know, you've got a U.S. economy that they can't get to grow, and and, and at least not without massive inflation, which does away with real growth. So I, I hate when you the post question, these like, things that are just at my bedtime, Chris. I can't sleep. <laughs> don't well, do it. Look, like, do Aaron, or <laughs> but here, here's my point. Hey, you say that, but the the, the the difference between United States and then America and uh, uh, the the US and then Europe or Britain, like you just showed, well, you know, you're just saying America's gonna become more like Britain and, and Europe, which are already in that quagmire, which are already facing Japan. that today. You just showed stagnation numbers that don't get better in the next two to three years. So what's the difference between that and the United States, where the United States is supposed to be heading? 
Well, it's not heading there right now, but I mean, it could be, right? But the Europe and, and Britain are there. And, they're, you know, Europe and Britain are coming up with policies, you know, trying to, like you said, onshore things, get things back moving and come mm-hmm. up with tax incentives and doing weird, like the guy from JP Morgan says, absolutely weird political things um, to get their economies going. Uh, whereas, you know, places like Mexico, I, I think Mexico, it's a great story. It Because of the onshoring, because of U.S. turning away from Asia, where is it going to turn to? It's, it's neighbors. You know, ca- Canada and, and, and Mexico are potentially huge, great growth stories going into the next yeah. 10 years because of that. Um, so there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to bring it back to the United States sure. real quick, Alan. That's what I thought you would. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> just because it, it has been pretty incredible well it's just a huge amount um, of information weeks, just to right? focus on us right. absolutely yeah it, it, the two weeks we've been here we, we've discussed and i'm going to probably just go through a little bit um uh i, I hope you can see my screen Is i it, can uh, briefing.com yeah briefing.com so i'm just going to bring up this little uh the little chart i have from this u.s trade talk if i can get, get it to show properly yeah and you can't really see it, and I can't really make it big because then it opens up everything. But basically, there's a couple things that are kind of stimulating thought about, well, first of all, this is a huge increase in uh, the market since in, in the last two weeks. It's really been the entire um, entire November has been just super bullish. And I mean super bullish where we had like 7 to 8% returns in, in the rut. Uh, 6% returns in S&P in a two-week period, which is more than is expected for the month based on typical, you know, uh, money, uh, the market makers' expectations. So, you know, where do we go from here? Do we get another month in December? Do we get the follow-through in the second half of November? Uh, These are bullish periods for the year. Actually, the beginning of November isn't so bullish. I showed you the graph. Last time we talked, the end of December gets super bullish. Can we really be that bullish? After we just came off, you know, these these giant or these valuations are not super cheap. Yeah, it, not and they were super cheap. And actually, well. the numbers that and I think that's what I want to talk about a little bit. Like I don't want to show this, but we had the unemployment stuff come out, and I don't know if you can sh- see my graph here about unemployment. But you know, unemployment claims are going up. Not a good thing in the United States, but viewed as good because that means that the Federal Reserve won't increase interest rates. Yeah. So as we're in this place now, where we're in this kind of uh, bubbly, if euphoric uh, mentality, where you think that the bad news is actually good news, because it, you know this stops the Fed from increasing in interest rates. So mm-hmm. we're at this soft landing, and I think this soft landing story rhetoric is going to continue for a little while, meaning three months. You know, meaning <laughs> a few more months. We'll just keep saying, yeah, the economy is getting you know weaker, jobs are getting you know harder to find and there's more unemployment, but that just keeps the, you know, the hope up that, you know, the federal reserve won't keep interest rates rising. And and not only that, but they may actually decrease interest rates. However, you know, not knowing anything about anything, you don't want the fed to decrease interest rates. That means the economy is really going into a recession. So there's this like low between the two, you're kind of up at the hump and you're going to watch the fed not do anything too damaging. Um, And I think the fed, sees that too. And they're just going to say, look, we're going to keep rates rate steady indefinitely. And indefinitely meaning until things get bad. So what are the, some of the things that can make the Fed change its point of view? Okay. First of all, if inflation kicks back up, they're going to have to increase interest rates. Hard to see when you just showed me all the data about, you know, PMIs in Germany, inflation, you know, is coming, coming down because they're just there's just no, nothing going on in terms of the economies in this world, not just in the United States, but just in general world uh, inflation is coming down. So and you just talked about food prices in Europe. It's the same thing in the United States. So I don't think we're, we're not at this point where we're going to talk about increasing the interest rates, but when the whole market has turned, turned its head on this idea that the Fed will pivot and, and decrease interest rates as soon as March of next year, I don't think it's going to happen, but there are some issues that, that are popping up. And one of those issues is uh, consumer debt. And, and and spending. We saw this. Uh, Home Depot came out and talked about it. Target came out and talked about it. their stock shot up because they had prepared for uh, less consumers and tightened up their margins and tight, tightened up their discounts. But you don't grow a business when there's nobody buying your stuff. So it's, it's a quick one quarter or two quarter kind of 
you know, makes your earnings look good, but it's not a long-term plan. So, and I think the long-term plan has, and and what they were saying was the CEO said, yeah, we, 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 we we were able to salvage something this quarter. It wasn't as bad as earlier this year when we, what was kind of unexpected, but going forward, we don't see a lot of growth. We don't see revenue growth, growth at all. And, and, and the key to that, what came out kind of in, 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 uh, we talked a little bit about it on the channel is this, uh, you know, Capital One, which issues the most um, uh, ca- credit card debt in the United States, or one of the biggest credit card companies, you know, is, is talking about delinquencies and write offs. So, you know, non charge write offs. So, the monthly non charge, non charge off rate. It, 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 you know, you're up here at these all time highs that, again, you didn't see. Um, you didn't see for a, you know, since like 2000, 2001 or 2020, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, to 2021 or 2019. So you're back at this time when if, if, and, and, and a lot of people are talking about this as a function of student debt payments. So I don't know if you know about this in, in Europe, mm-hmm. but the, the, the Biden's plan to get the kids not to have to pay for their schools didn't work out as planned. So the, Kids have to start paying for their education that they received for the last four years. So now uh, this this uh, uh, the, the the student debt has come due. Where are they putting it? They're putting it on credit cards. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good plan, right? So if you can't, and, and we're going into a Christmas season, you're going to have Black Friday the next Friday. You're going to have Cyber Monday the Monday after that. You're going into the Christmas season, big spending. You're going to come up with a lot of people giving forecasts, and then the companies themselves saying, "Yeah." Uh, didn't work out that way or we, we didn't get up you know we didn't increase business by 10 percent. we only increased it by three percent this year if those come in soft uh that's where we got a problem where the first of all the the stops can sell off the market can sell off and also the, it shows that the economy is probably slowing faster than the fed uh mm-hmm. it, it is uh forecasting and and maybe you know maybe in march there will be actually um, a bigger problem than the Fed foresees. That's not the case right now. What the Fed foresees right now is that if there will be no interest rate rises. Uh, probably, at least the market foresees there will be no interest rate rises this year or any time in the future that they've ended. And and the um, and and going forward, it, it looks weak. And the market thinks it looks weak. But the Federal Reserve has adamantly stated uh, since our last talk, Alan, that Fe- Jerome Powell came out and said, "Look." There, no one. He actually said this. I'm going to screw up the quote, but he said no one is talking about uh, in, interest rate interest rates decreasing. It's not even a, it's not even being discussed. So when we, they all get together, they're talking about do we increase interest rates or do we leave them stable? No one's talking about in the next year uh, actually decreasing interest rates. I don't think the market's hearing that. I think the market's thinking, okay, this is going right. to get bad, and they're going to have to do it. Um, but you know, I I, I noticed. Uh, <clears throat> Somebody one somebody said some kind of economic historian said um, I read that last week that he said look the the bond market used to dictate to the Fed what it was going to do now the Fed dictates to the bond market what it's going to do so even it used to be that the bonds was a smart mm-hmm. money and then the rest of the world followed including the government now the government tells you what's going to happen and the Fed get and the bond market sometimes gets it wrong so mm-hmm. I think that's a little bit of difference between what we saw in the eighties mm-hmm. and early nineties. Yeah. And, 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 and now you just better listen to Jerome Powell because he's got the data. He sees what's mm-hmm. going on and, and to change his mind and the mind of the, the Fed Reserve is going to be a lot more difficult than, uh, than it used to be. So I just wanted to bring out that, you know, we're going to watch the, the new thing to watch and it'll be a different thing from us. I'm not talking about this time. We're not talking about interest rates and i'm not going to bring up the chart we usually bring up about fed interest rates and what the forecast is i told you there's going to be no more interest rate increases yeah. however i, I think he's been saying that for a now, while so chris i mean uh, he's he's always kind of maintained that yeah, so he, the market since, that said that yeah, since 2024 we'll get reduced yeah reductions yeah. but we're what we're going to watch now is uh every week to come out initial claims and continuing claims on labor and if we see mm-hmm. these ramp up above expectations like they did this week 223 was expected 231 is the actual and like the, the 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 continuing claims they don't even give a forecast for but i showed you the blue and orange lines and it's on our mm-hmm. stock uh stock uh trade talk telegram channel mm-hmm. that's what you got to watch if this thing starts ramping up that will cause the fed 
fear, um, mm. especially the dovish members of the Federal Reserve, to, that they say, look, we inflation is not the issue. We got to worry about deflation and we've got to keep people employed because that's the only way you get a soft landing. If a soft landing means that people that employ, employment numbers don't increase rapidly and we don't end up with these, uh, you know, 8% on, on unemployment. However, I did say before, and I think Jerome Powell and some of the more hawkish members of the Federal Reserve think we do need an 8% unemployment to inflict enough pain in the economy to make inflation come down to 2%. Because 4% is still way above yeah. their, their long-term yeah. average. So how this works out next year is going to be really interesting. We have a presidential election. I'm going to go into a little bit of that probably uh, in December, what that means for the market in 2024. We just, I just got last, last week, we just got the Stock Traders Almanac for 2024. Um, so it's a positive year. Those are the positive years for the market. It's the years after that, the first year of the presidential election year. Uh, after, you know, the president actually has to follow through on what he promised. Mm -hmm. The market's like, oh shit, uh, things don't work. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah. I, Right now, it's hard to say that we can be anything but bullish. Bullish is what we are. We're allocated to the market um, and everything. The technicals look good. And I just, the rest of us are, you know, the rest of these conversations are ours just talking about what could go wrong and we'll wait for that. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time uh, on the big macro problems because yeah, they're interesting to discuss, but the market's not reflecting right now. Yeah. Markets in a very bullish period, and, and it is bullish right now. So, a uh, good call on on Mexico. That is an interesting place. The Mexican peso has been up, uh, leading all the emerging market currencies, and uh, it's tied to oil. And it's this onshoring play. So, if if you want to look at the ETF EWW, that's got some strength, probably going for the next few months also. But mm -hmm. um, yep, that's what I see. Uh, anyways, have Mr. a good weekend, everybody. Yeah. Have a good Thanksgiving because we won't talk about the next fit will be after. Yeah, that, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And I and we'll we'll be in we'll be in touch in December then because uh, although we yeah, it's the first of December. More, it's the first of yeah, December. Yeah. It's the, the first. Year. Yeah. Okay. Great. Super. So we'll first. get a wrap up. We'll see how we'll see how bullish the market continues the rest of the month. But we've we've had a good spurt already. So even if it goes yeah. sideways for a while, we're fine. Yeah. This yeah. Is good. As long as it just right. doesn't retrace back again. Yeah. But yeah that's exactly. Cool. And if it does. Then we'll have real problems with, with, with what's going on. Okay. Take care, everybody. Have Thanks a good weekend, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.